way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He loves to see us take communion as we did. And it was a delightful thing that he has given us. And it's a sign that God is for us and not against us. Yeah. For he who sacrificed his son did not withhold him from us. We will not find offense with us anymore. But rather, through Christ, will freely give us all things. That's what the Bible says. So He's made a way for us to uh, enter in. And we are grateful <coughs> for the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, I'm reading out of Joel. I'm reading out of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in heaven and on the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, this morning, I present to you the Spirit of the living God. God says that what I have done for you I have already determined in my heart to do for you. And I prophesied it. As it says in the scripture that I don't do anything without first revealing my secret. My plan. This plan for man. And this plan for man is about pouring out his Holy Spirit. God fulfilled this word on the day of Pentecost. From the beginning, when man got separated from me, through the chicanery of the evil one, and through sin, I have desired to get back in. To pour out my spirit and restore myself into intimacy with my family. The Holy Spirit is my gift to you. That I am with you. That I am for you. I'm not against you. When my spirit comes, it's a fulfillment of my word, but also the accomplishment of my cross. For on that cross I said it is finished. What was finished? The work that I came to do, I finished it. To prepare all believers in me to be able to receive the infilling of my Holy Spirit. Of all the faiths out there, 
hear me, there is only one that has a promise that has been fulfilled. The promise of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, to come and to dwell inside of you. To fill you. You see, I made a place for you. I told my church that I, I'd go to prepare a place for you. This place that I prepare for you is to be able to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that has been promised. The gift of God that is to come and not only dwell with you, but to dwell inside of you. My kingdom come, my will be done. How? On earth as it is in heaven. There is a unity in heaven that you have received because I have dwelt inside of you and I am there for eternity. I have freed you from the tormentor. I have freed you from the oppressor. I have freed you from the bondage of him who sinned and caused my beloved to sin. Yes, Adam and Eve were my beloved. Remember, I walked with them in the cool of the garden. We walked. It was a wonderful walk. A wonderful talk. A wonderful, sweet communion and fellowship. How we walk together and talk together. We walked in love. We walked in freedom. There was no torment. There was no pain. There was no disease. There was no limit on the days that they could walk with me. We walked in love. Until man became separated from me. And I could no longer be with them and in them. There was a separation from me. But my plan was to get back in. I come that I might dwell in temples not made with hands, but the temple that I have made. And you are the temple that I desire to enter and to fill. The Holy Spirit bears witness that you are children of the light, children of the truth, children of the Spirit, children of the Lord God Himself. The Holy Spirit is my gift to you. And for as many as will call on my name, Remember how I not only filled those in the upper room, I later filled those gathered in the room of Cornelius. That the moment they believed, 
they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. This ministry is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Its name has been given by God. Its name is prophetic. You see, it had another name that refers to the love of God. It used to be called Agape Ministries. Then I changed the name and said it shall now be called New Birth, New Life Ministries. Is that not indicative of the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> that ye be born again? Born of the Spirit? That you would have life? Life of the Spirit? New birth? New life? For we all have been born into something wonderful. And I am here to testify that my spirit continues to be poured out. There are many, many more vessels that I desire to fill. There are many more places that I desire to manifest my spirit. For when I manifest my spirit, people will know the truth. People will know that I am there. You are carriers of my spirit. It is a precious, precious gift that I have given you. He is the spirit of life. You have my spirit of life. that not only quickens you, gives life to you, it will give life to those around you. Whether you do so by words or by deeds, even as Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. You too, when you speak by my spirit, release life everywhere you go. When you lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You have ministered life. You have ministered life. My spirit also brings light. Revelation. Understanding. For without that, nobody can know me. So the Holy Spirit is here to reveal what I have given to my church. The Holy Spirit is the game changer. The Holy Spirit <coughs> is what changes people. Religion does not change people. 
the Spirit of God changes people. They become a new creation. Remember I told my servants who I have trained to wait until they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit that causes change. When the Holy Spirit comes, we become new creations. We become like Him. One of the Holy Spirit's functions, jobs, is to change us into His image, into the likeness of the One that dwells inside of us, to allow us to become more and more like Christ. When the Holy Spirit comes, He comes with signs and wonders, so that people will know that these are more than words, or just another religion trying to carve its way out to mankind. The Spirit is what makes the church different than all other religions of the world. The religion of the world does not carry the Spirit of God. Religion of the world actually wrestles against God. It fights against God. It cannot yield to God, though it may claim to have presence of God and commandments of God. But it lacks the Spirit of God. The Church of God comes with the Holy Spirit. He is the game changer. Notice in the prophecy of Joel how the Holy Spirit was not only promised to be poured out, but there, at that time, was going to be an inward change in those people. That suddenly, people will begin to prophesy. Suddenly, people will begin to have visions. The Holy Spirit comes to change and come out as well through the vessels of God. Notice Jesus ministered by the Holy Spirit everywhere he went. He ministered by the Spirit and that sets the foundation for the church to receive the Holy Spirit and to continue in the greater works through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We know that the Apostle Paul received the Holy Spirit and it took him out of the confines and the blindness of the religion that he had once protected and defended. He persecuted me and my church until he came to know me when I made myself known to him and then I filled him with my Holy Spirit. 
So now, I changed his name. Like this ministry. I changed his name from Saul to Paul. I am the game changer. And when he went out to minister, he told the church rightly that his ministry was not in new doctrine and new word alone, but in demonstration of spirit and of power, so that people's faith would not be in the words or doctrines of men, but in the power of God. God's Holy Spirit needs to be unchained by you. Don't give them religion. Give them the Holy Spirit. Yes, teach them. Teach them about me. Teach them that I am real, that I'm here, and that I come. When I ascended into the heavens, I did so by declaring, it's expedient that I go, because if I do not go, he won't come. But if I go, I will send him. And the world has got to know that the Holy Spirit is here. Yes. We have got to walk in the Spirit of the living God. We've got to breathe by the Spirit of the living God. We have to prophesy by the Spirit of the living God. We have to minister by the Spirit of the living God. We have the Holy Spirit to change us and to change the world around us. Religion doesn't chain, uh, change us, it chains us. Religion binds you. It doesn't loose you. Religion blinds you. It doesn't open you up and show you things. Religion deceives you. When I come to reveal myself to you, my spirit is being poured out upon this planet once again in a new and profound way. I have prophesied it and I have been getting my bride ready to receive my spirit. It is the time of the Holy Spirit coming, the wave of God from heaven. And it's a mighty, mighty wave coming upon this earth. And the gates of hell shall not be able to stop it. Amen. My church will shine my glory. And my glory is my spirit. What a glorious spirit that we have. <clears throat> we live in the spirit. We should also walk in the spirit. God has given us a precious, precious gift. The Lord said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you always. And he comes to fulfill that by the Holy Spirit. Understand this. Without the Holy Spirit, people are lost. People are lost. Turn with me to Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, 
He is not his. We need the Holy Spirit. And if we receive the Holy Spirit, it's because we become Christ. The moment that we become Christ, He brings us before the throne of God. He ushers in a new age and a transformational work upon man that angels in heaven are still talking about. They are still marveling. Look what the Lord has done. That he poured out his spirit upon man. That every man, woman, and child who will put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved and filled with the spirit, the Holy Spirit of the living God. That we would become his and we would never be alone. That we will be with him forever. This Holy Spirit has caused me to become born again. I am not the same as I once was. And I have got a different life than I once had. The life of the Holy Spirit has come to me. Praise God Almighty who has poured out His Spirit in these last days because His Son has paid it all. He finished it. And what did He finish? He finished everything that He needed to do and He died on that cross so that the Holy Spirit could come to those who dwell in Christ. The Holy God comes in the power of the Spirit to dwell inside of all who will believe. This is the true faith. This is the true religion of the world. This is God Almighty who will bear witness. If you are out there and you have not received Jesus Christ, and you didn't receive the Holy Spirit yet because you cannot receive the Holy Spirit till after you receive the redemptive work of Christ that cleanses you and prepares you to receive the Holy Spirit. You need to receive Him today. Amen. For this gift is for all. Turn with me to Acts. Chapter 3. Hallelujah. Jesus. We gladly receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Acts, actually, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. This is where the Holy Spirit of heaven invaded the earth. And people did not understand it. They misjudged it. And they spoke wrongly of it. They thought that my servants were drunk. And Peter corrected it. And he affirmed to them that this indeed, this manifestation, this amazing wonderment was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. And listen to what he said in verse 38 when they were pierced and cut into their heart by the words of life disseminated by Peter. You remember he didn't speak religion to them, he spoke spirit to them. And they asked, when their hearts were moved, what do we need to do? In verse 38, listen to this. Then Peter said to them, Repent 
and that every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And look at this. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is just not about receiving forgiveness of sins. It's about the Holy Spirit that comes to get in. To live inside of you. And to change you and to transform you. And listen, this promise is for all. If you're listening, it's for you too. Wherever you are. Look at 39. For this promise is to you and to your children and to who all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. It is for all. It is for all. The Holy Spirit will come where he's welcomed. Mm -hmm. Will you welcome him? Will you bless him? Will you receive him? Will you embrace him? Will you allow him to lead you to transform you, to change you from glory to glory. Meaning, it's a continuous increase. You don't arrive. You thrive and you come forward and you excel. There's an acceleration time coming, people. There's an acceleration in the Holy Ghost. I am accelerating my work in my church. There is more. There is more to be revealed. There's more in store. There's so much more. Don't look for the old. Look for the new. Don't look for the old thing. Look for the new thing. It's a new thing that God is doing. It's an increase, not a decrease. Don't ask for the things of old. Ask for the things of new. It's not what's behind you. It's what's ahead of you. Yes. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes. Yes. He is so good. The Holy Spirit comes where He is welcome. And I welcome the Holy Spirit here. I am tired of working around the Holy Spirit. I want to work in the Holy Spirit. I'm tired of working against the Holy Spirit.